a loom technique that Nancy will show us. But we have to string the loom by running thread back and forth, anchoring it on the tack. And then to keep it apart, we have to put some bead guides in there to keep the threads apart. A basic rectangular wooden frame is used for setting up the loom. The loom holds the warp, which are the vertical threads for weaving quills. The warp is made with strands of wax cotton thread that run the length of the frame. These threads are secured firmly to the frame with a thumbtack on each end. The number of warp threads to use is determined by the desired width for the weaving project. At the top and bottom of the warp, a perpendicular row of threaded beads is positioned. The beads are threaded onto a long length of wax thread using a beading needle. The amount of beads required is one less than the number of warp threads. The end of the beaded thread is secured to one side of the wooden frame with a knot. The beaded thread is brought under the warp threads, then under and over the other side of the frame, with the beads centered. The beads are pushed up just above the warp, one bead between each warp thread. The beaded thread, with the needle still attached, is run back across. While doing this, the needle is passed through each bead. Then, the thread is tied off on the frame. This process is repeated at the other end of the warp. The beads are roughly the same width as the quills, and they act as spacers to ensure that the weaving is equally proportioned. At the bottom beaded row on the warp, where the quill work will start, Another very long thread is used, a weft. The weft runs horizontally to the vertical warp, providing structure and a straight edge for starting the quill work. The weft is brought under one warp, then over the next for eight rows. Dampened and flattened quills of similar widths are then inserted in between each vertical warp. Before inserting them, the ends of each quill are folded. The fold of the quill is positioned on the last horizontal weft row. In this way, the quills will also act as warp. Positioning the warp quills at the start is tricky since they are not secured until a few rows are woven. To start weaving the quills on the loom, the quills are gently bent up, one by one, between the warp threads. They are gently tightened in place against the weft thread by hand. The quills are moistened with water as needed to keep them soft and flexible. The weft thread, secured to one side of the loom frame, is run across and above the warp under the lifted quills and then secured to the other side of the frame. Then the next line is woven. This time the quills, which are now above the warp, are bent down over the weft thread between the warp threads. Then they are again gently tightened in place, this time with a tool, in this case a plastic comb. This helps reduce any gaps and tightens the quills against the weft, giving the weaving structural stability. Next, the weft thread will go under the warp threads. So when the quills are down, the next weft thread oh. goes under. Oh, just under. When the quills are up, the next weft, th next weft thread, say that so ten times So you don't fast. actually go this nope. way through them. Nope. Just, oh, and so now it's so. a matter of going. And this is why this has to be taught, mm -hmm. because you're, bend, you're using this to bend the quill over now. Mm -hmm. So now you bend them all up. You see? Ooh, and push that it. thread up as you go to us. Uh, yep, so but not so much that you actually pull the bend out of it. So this is why the quills have to be super wet, because you have to have that really, really fine bend right there. And right now these don't want to. Mm -hmm. You start on that right side normally? Just because I right-handed. Okay. Is it, you have to work across the whole row. So do you sometimes use something to hold those down as you're going across? Uh, you know what? I'm missing a quill. Oh, no, wait a minute. Yeah, I'm missing a quill. It's short. It's no, really it's short. short. So yeah. here's one where I'm not going to bring. Here, see this guy here? Mm -hmm. He's too short for one more weave. So the next time, I'm going to add one there. Skip it. Okay. And that's what that's doing is tighten that stitch. Uh, because these guys are too dry, they're a little bit hard to work with. And to answer your question about holding them in place, they will stay in place. But sometimes I've been known to walk off by sticking a piece of tape over them if I'm going to yeah. go away. If it's that wide, too. Huh? Yeah. 
And you can see why you really want to start with a narrow piece because mm -hmm. you'll be done seven quills and mm -hmm. I'll still be working on the same row. And imagine the big wide knife, those big knife sheaths that I showed you, they're that wide. Mm -hmm. yeah. So imagine the kind of take, because they're working one whole row at a time. See what I'm doing? Mm -hmm. It's just a question of feel. Are you missing one right there too? Yep. Because I couldn't, I couldn't feel them under there. Once you get going, you'll be able to feel which ones are ready to be worked. Right now, I'm running into the quills that are down, down underneath. I use something like this to give me a nice flat straight. Mm -hmm. Now I can feel it when it's straight, but you mm -hmm. can use this as your straight edge. Okay. And uh, unfortunately, these don't exactly match. I couldn't find combs that were this with the part. I had one and I can't find it. So just do what you can with those. In fact, when I'm walking away from a piece for a while and, I, and the quills are too wet, I can stick this in the work and just leave it there. Um, so when I left off, I, uh, whenever the quill gets too short, you have to splice a new one in. Mm -hmm. And the way you do that is by leaving, leaving it out of, leave that short quill out of the weave for one row. And then you add, you add a quill mm -hmm. over the warp thread that's been left open. I'll show you how. Nice. I already folded my quill, see? And you know what, I'm gonna do it right here. The short end goes towards you. Short end goes towards you. And the trick is getting it down in the hole. I push it down, and I let the fold just, just sit there. And that's one of the reasons why this has to be anchored over here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't want it real tight. Okay, so there's one, and I'm going to add one there. She's showing us how to. So you do a fold in the new quill. Open up your, see where the old, the new thread is there? Mm -hmm. And just put that down, it's like inserting a little staple over a thread. And then you set it down just by bending it over that thread, right? And there's your row completed. And then how do you? During the residency, the artists examined quillwork pieces from museum collections and discussed historic techniques. One technique looked like the quills were loomed in place onto the garment. They did not know how this was done, so artist and conservator Nancy Fonicello experimented and came up with a method. Well, because I'm only starting. On the ups, on the upstitch, oh, yeah, I'm it. pulling oh, now. Be. I'm pulling this way. That's it. Mm -hmm. it's a wider stitch. It's wider here, yeah. but look, it's open here. But I don't know well, if this is because it's exploded up. They've, yeah, broken out. Mm -hmm. And then that is setting the. Um, the more you pull these, the tighter it gets in the weave here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so like loom work. And I thought this had to be tied to your body somehow, mm -hmm. but I'm just holding the tension in my hands because I release the tension when I'm flipping the quills up, and then I tighten it again. So it's always in my hands. So the, the weft thread goes over and under. Oops. And it comes to this side. You make a stitch. You make a stitch. Some of them I've just put in. Okay. And I'm using this to push it down. This guy's escaping. thread on top. These quills now are going to flip down over it. Oops. Yep, that's 
takes a little practice getting them even. Yeah. Once you've got them all there, you can hold them with a single finger. And I just have, these have to be moist all the time. They can't dry out. Mm -hmm. So I'm, keep, I'm continually dipping my hand in the water over there. Mm 